Hello, anyone and everyone. I am Echo, and today we're exploring uh, Real Mist Masterpiece Edition. I almost just said Mist. That would have been a bit of a bit of a mistake. It's pretty, you know, same game, but not quite specific enough. Anyway, um, I'm not sure why it's night out. I had to close the game. At, like I saved it, and I closed the game. I had to take care of other things, and then I came back. And when I loaded the save, for some reason, now it's nighttime. It was definitely daytime when I saved my game. So, I'm not sure how that works. But, oh well. I mean, we, we're definitely... All the switches are up and everything like that. So, the stuff we did last time definitely still counted. But anyway. First, we're going to take a look at these books here. This red book. Got nothing in it. And this blue book. Also got nothing in it. But, whoops, nope, nope, close that. Pages in the books. I believe that's all he has to say. So, uh, well, we'll listen to the other one first. There you go. So, basically, the whole plot of the game, pretty much, is that, uh, and, and this got mentioned in the last episode, but I actually forgot to touch upon it, um, the father, which is uh, Atris, he has these two sons, Akinar, who's currently trapped in the blue book, and Cirrus, who's currently trapped in the red book, and uh, one of them burned all of his other books, as we can see here, all of these books have been burned. Not super thoroughly, some of them still have the titles available. Like these. Oh, let's not read those just yet. We don't have the time for that. <laughs> um, but, uh, yeah, basically they burned all of his books. Um, these were travel books, which, uh, much like how we got here to Mist, and much like how these guys are trapped in these books, it's a book with a little picture in it, and you touch your hand to the picture, and it transports you to another world. And so he had a large collection of books that he used to connect to other, you know, other worlds, basically. And they went and burned them all, and then he went and tricked them into being trapped in these two books until he could figure out which one of them did it. Um... And basically, our goal is to figure out which of one of the two brothers is innocent and which one of the two brothers burned all the books and then free them. 
and that's why we're going around and we're collecting pages. There's a red page and a blue page in every, uh, you know, every area of the game. And as we collect more pages, the picture becomes clearer and we'll be able to hear them better and, the, and they'll also tell us more stuff. So we'll be able to get a, a better picture of, uh, you know, of what they're like and determine whether or not we can trust them. So now we have this thing, tower rotation. Which this can either point towards the gears or towards the, uh, like, this place, dental chair place, slash the ship. I guess the ship is more what it's pointing towards. There it points to the tree. Okay, so the, the spaceship gears, tree, other tree. Okay, that's it. Alright, let's have it point towards the gears first. Alright. And then here we've got the, uh, the door. That's actually a picture of the door right there. And that's a picture of an open passageway. So, let's click on that. It makes the open passageway appear, but it closes up the, the doorway. So, yeah. Pretty nifty little thing. Not exactly a hard puzzle, but, oh well. If we were looking for hard puzzles, we'd be playing... Well, we'd be playing a missed game I haven't played yet. But, <laughs> I'm not. So, alright, gotta close the door. And now go up to the library. A hidden library. But a library nonetheless. Also a library that's distinctly lacking in books. But oh well. Alright. I've got that ladder. And that ladder. Uh, now I believe the information on the... Uh... Yeah, because this shows us where the tower is pointing. Towards the gears. And we'll end up switching... The, uh, the tower to look at all uh, four of the different sections. And this key has what looks like a time, 240, and something else on it. So I'm going to write that down real quick. So it's pointing towards the gears. The clue is 240 and 221, which if I was to guess, I'd say 221 is probably a combination or something. So yeah, basically th this tower is uh, pretty much the first and best place for getting uh, clues to try and unlock all of the uh, different areas in the game, because it's... You know, it's got, like, four of them, of them all in one spot. So, I remember that much at least. <laughs> Alright. And also, who decided to make paintings uh, somehow weird magical buttons for interacting with things? There's three of them all in this room. Not that I'm complaining. It's a very cool interface design. But, like, how does somebody think of that? And even for the game designers. Not even just, like, the in-game world of whoever, you know, invented those. But, I mean, even the game designers in real life decided, hey, let's have the player click on paintings to, to do stuff. Oh, well. Up here, you can see, yeah, it's pointing to the, to the ship. Not the, uh, not the building so much. More the ship. Okay. Let's get back down. Animation is very smooth in this. Come on, go forward. <laughs> Seems like you got stuck there for a second. Alright. Oh, those are dates. Those are dates for sure. Okay, so... When it's pointing towards the tree, it's... 
October 11th, 1984, 10.04 a.m. And January 17th, 12.07 at 5.46 a.m. And then, oh, actually, hold on, oops. Okay, and November 23rd, 9.97, 9.97, at 6.57 p.m. Yes, okay. Apologies for having to wait for me to uh, write those down. I don't want to do it off camera or anything like that because that, you know, that would make the uh, the whole website me to go up here, actually. <laughs> yeah, I don't want to do that off, uh, like, off camera or anything like that because I want to keep the playthrough... Uh, you know, I want to keep it feeling natural, basically, you know? I don't want people to, to, you know, I don't want, I don't want it to have a bunch of cuts and stuff like that, if I can help it, because in a point-and-click adventure game, I'm always nervous if I'm, you know, gonna make a cut, that people, that people are gonna see it as, like, oh, look, he, you know, went and probably looked up the answer online or something, or whatever. I don't, I don't know. I'm just paranoid. Alright, but now it's pointing towards the big tree. The totally non-suspicious tree with the, uh... with the brick wall surrounding it. So let's go see what clue that one has for us. Okay, first let's check up here. Yes, it's pointing towards the giant tree. Very nice. Okay. Go forward! I don't know why the, uh... When getting down that ladder, for some reason it... Seems to lock up the, uh... The movement keys a little bit, where you can't press... Two of them at the same time. Um... Alright, when it's pointing towards the giant tree, the clue is 7, 2, 4. And actually, I just realized on my earlier note, I accidentally wrote down tree when I meant to say when it's pointing towards the ship. So, whoops, let's clear that up right now. Okay, when it's pointing towards the, sh the ship, that's the one with all the freaking dates. Okay. So yeah, 7, 2, 4. Yeah, 7, 2, 4. And back down. I have to kind of wonder, how do the... Actually, I think I just got my answer. I was about to say, how do the mechanics work where somehow the uh, the words on the wall turn or, or change and stuff like that? Depending on where you point the tower. But I suppose... I suppose the uh, elevator does seem to be turning a different amount when you uh, when you do that. So I guess, hmm, I'm not sure. It's hard to tell. Yeah, it's definitely. I think I, def I think it turned longer that time. And now we're pointing at the spaceship, right? Yep. Looking right down on it. Okay. Alright, and up here, the clue is 59 volts. Okay. Alright, so... Spaceship. And the clue is 59 volts.
Alright. Good, now that we've got that stuff, let's crawl back on down, and let's actually take a look at the room for a second here, because now that I've now that I'm thinking about it, I can't help. I can't help myself. Because the room shouldn't be able to physically change just because the head of it turns in order to look at a different area. So... Hmm. And it doesn't even look like... It doesn't look like there's secret panels or anything that the... Like, like maybe if there's a secret panel here and... Oh, wait a minute! Holy crap! No, that's exactly it! Yeah, there's, uh... This thing, the... I don't know what you call it. The sign, I guess. Or whatever. That's, like, flat against the wall. And the whole room turns when you turn the, uh... When you turn the tower head. And right here, this section that you can see is a bit more gray... That's, like, a separate wall behind this part, which is metal. And so this part turns along with the whole room, but this part stays stationary. Oh, that is cool. I've, I've never actually noticed that before, but that's got to be it. I mean, there's no other explanation for how these, like, clue signs could change. Huh. All right. Well, uh, let's go back down and take a look around. And, uh, actually I'm gonna have to cut this episode a little bit short, unfortunately. Uh, I don't have a lot of time to report right now because i got to go to work soon, but hopefully uh, the <laughs> going back and forth and collecting clues bit didn't uh, bore you all too much. But uh, I think, you know, we... We, we uh, covered the basics of the stories and stuff like that, so, uh, oh well, at least we accomplished something in this episode, so I'll see you all next time, and uh, if you made it to the end of this, then thank you very much, and uh, please consider leaving a comment, I'd like that, and uh, I'll see you all in the next episode. Bye bye